In the last video, I discussed a simple yet powerful algorithm called gradient descent and used it to train a linear model on a few data points. A big part of gradient descent is differentiating the cost function which was simple enough for linear regression. However, when dealing with deep neural nets, the resulting cost function can be fairly complex involving hundreds if not thousands of parameters and it would be quite impractical to do this by hand. In this video, I'll first discuss a very common way to differentiate numerically called finite differences and then move on to automatic differentiation which has enabled this deep learning revolution. I'll discuss here in detail the concept of computation graphs and then the step where an AD engine evaluates derivative of any given function. But before all this, let's look into differentiation and what the derivative of a function represents. Derivative of a function measures the sensitivity to change of the function output with respect to the input. Let me explain that in simple words. Consider a function which depends on single variable x. The derivative of this function is formally defined as the ratio of the change in the output of the function to the change in the input. The very first thing we need is a location x where the derivative is desired. For example, x is equal to 0 0.5. Then selecting some h value and plugging that into the formula gives the slope of the line connecting two dots. This slope approximates the derivative of the function but it won't be accurate if h is too large. The accurate or exact derivative is defined as the slope of this line when h gets smaller and converges to zero. How this indicates sensitivity is such that the value f dash x is small where the function is relatively flat and it's quite large for the steeper sections. Numerically speaking, taking h to 0 will blow up this ratio. However, it's reasonable if I say that this derivative can be approximated using only the ratio as long as the h value is kept really small. This is called finite difference approximation and this specific case is first order accurate in h. The main concern for not choosing finer differences for machine learning is accuracy. Finer differences can have high order accuracy, but it'll always be an approximation and to be fair, why settle for something average when the best is possible? Automatic differentiation is just a smart application of chain rule where a complex operation is split into many simple operations. Consider the example of linear regression that I discussed in the last video it all starts with the data set where x and y columns can be seen as two matrices. A linear model is then defined by multiplying x with a weight and adding a bias term to it. Notice that I'm using generic matrix multiplication here and the addition operation is actually broadcast addition. The cost function is then used to quantify the error in the predictions. What an automatic differentiation engine does is log all of this in a computation graph. The very first thing it does is put x as a leaf node, followed by matrix multiplication which returns an intermediate variable. Bias is then added to each element of the vector z tilde to get the variable z. Then it'll break up the cost function into the elementary operations, starting by subtracting prediction from the ground truth labels. It then takes the square of the output followed by adding up all the elements of the vector. Finally, the normalization is done by dividing the result by a constant which is equal to the length of the vector. Automatic differentiation needs two things, computation graph and local gradients. We already have the graph, which is made up of all the variables and the operations performed on them. Let's look at what local gradients are. Local gradient is just the derivative defined across each operation in the computation graph. So basically, we just have to look at each operation and provide the derivative of the output with respect to inputs. Starting with the matrix multiplication, we know that the partial derivative across each input is just the transpose of the other input. This is a basic matrix calculus rule. Moving on to the addition of the bias term, derivative of z with respect to z tilde is just a vector of length n and all entries as one. This is a vector of ones because notice that z tilde is a vector. Hence, its derivative would also be a vector. 
On the other hand, derivative with respect to b is just a scalar one. Now we are moving into the loss function and we can define derivatives across these small operations quite easily. The key thing to remember again is to see if the input is a vector, then its derivative would also be a vector. Using this, we can define the rules to get local derivatives across all the operations like power, sum, division, etc. 95% of the work is done now. We have the computation graph and the local gradients. Getting the global derivative of cost function with respect to parameters w and b is just about moving through this graph backward and applying chain rule at each step. Let's start by getting the derivative of L with respect to L3. Then using chain rule, we can say that the derivative of L with respect to L2 is the product of global derivative of L with respect to L3 and the local derivative of L3 with respect to L2. Plugging these values in, we get our answer. The star symbol here denotes element wise product where one upon n is added to each element of the unit vector. We do the same thing to get global derivative of L with respect to L1 and then L with respect to Z. Now we are at an interesting part where the path divides into two. Let's first get the derivative of L with respect to B. Using chain rule, we can multiply the global and local gradients. However, you have to remember that the operation here is broadcast addition. Hence, to get the derivative, we have to collapse or in other words, add the elements of the resulting vector. For Z tilde, we can do the usual thing and multiply both local and global gradients element wise. To get the derivative of L with respect to W, we need to apply chain rule a bit cautiously. Remember that we are using matrix multiplication here and W was post multiplied to X when Z tilde was created. Hence, we have to pre multiply the local gradient here. Just for completeness, let's get the derivative with respect to X as well. As mentioned earlier, X was pre multiplied to get Z tilde, hence the local gradient would be post multiplied. This might be a little uncomfortable for someone who's not familiar with vector calculus. But as I said, these can be seen as just the rules which you should keep in mind. Today, I discussed finite difference approximation to evaluate gradients and why it's not ideal for machine learning. Then I moved on to automatic differentiation and explained its key components like computation graph, local gradients, and finally demonstrated how it uses chain rule and the computation graph to get the exact derivatives effectively. Next, I'll start developing a simple deep learning library, which will be built on top of an automatic differentiation engine written from scratch and then move on to deep neural networks. If you found this video informative, please check out my other videos. I'll be putting together a complete playlist with the deep learning related content. And if you don't want to miss out on that, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I release a new video. Growing subscriber count will increase my motivation. And if you have any suggestions, please feel free to leave comment down below. Thank you.